Hi, this is Anne with a real quick destination check video for this week's assignment. Um, what we're going to do is take the data that powers um, this global information set about um, COVID-19 statistics and drill down um, much like this map does uh, for every state to our local state level. And you're actually going to have two assignments that relate to this data. The one today is specifically focused on using um, a particular API to pull data from the data repository that Johns Hopkins makes publicly available and use an event to know when you've got the data and can process it. Um, and then in a second assignment later on, um, rather than process one day of data, I'm going to challenge you to pick, say, a week of seven days and process um, the raw numbers for um, some week. But um, what I want to do is just show you where your code is, needs to get to. And then later, I'll give you a demo on how to, um, how to get started. So I'm going to take my solution code. Um, and you'll get something that's pretty close to the top of this. And um, what you see here is my um, replit with running replit with the code for the solution that you're supposed to get to this week. And then my output is over here. So um, I'm running this in a separate window. If I, um, if I refresh this, when the window loads, it'll run the init, okay? And in the init, it actually calls this API to pull the data in. And there's a listener or a handler specified for that, and that's show info. So after we hit, um, after we hit refresh, what we wait for is to see this alert. And um, you're welcome to comment that alert out and do without it. I actually find it kind of handy because if you end up breaking your code, um, what will happen is you won't see the alert. So even though I don't much like alerts, I think in this case, it would be handy to keep the alert working the whole time. So um, if I come over here and this is the running version of the code you see on the left, I hit refresh, I get the alert. And notice that we're processing actually the world's worth of data, um, 3,956 rows. But we're pulling out the data just for Wyoming on a particular date. And that's controlled by up here. Okay. And you end up with a four column table that has detailed statistics for each of the counties in Wyoming, plus um, this unassigned administrative unit uh, that we're actually going to sort of ignore in some cases. And um, what you need to do is create this table. You're going to get a partial version of it. And um, it has a total row. It has an average row for the couple of columns where averages make sense. And then down here, I've pulled out some statistics for maximum confirmed cases by county, um, minimum confirmed cases by county, and, um, and then the, the fatality percentage. So um, you're not going to get data that code that does all of this. Um, you're going to get data that does part of it. And then when you're done, you get to choose your own state. So um, to go for a different state on a different day, all you do is change these two variables, which I made globals just to keep things simple. You can't go for the same day you're working on. Um, I think the data in the repository lags by about two calendar days. But if I change these two variables and I come over here and refresh, click that, now I see the Vermont data for November 4th. And um, I want screenshots of both the Wyoming data because that's how I'll know easily that you are calculating everything right. And then um, leave me some running code for your state and date of choice. So that's where you're headed. Um, there'll be another video about how to get there.